This is my homemade electric bicycle. Now if you've watched my previous video about this machine, you'll probably notice that it looks a little bit different, and that's because I've made some modifications to the design, because it kind of sucked. Um, so I've changed the cabling because the original wiring melted right after I made that video, so it's now got these fat cables that don't melt because this thing pulls 100 amps or more quite easily. Um, some things have changed over here as well. This support bar has changed, but I don't think you can see it on the camera. Um, but despite all these modifications, it's still very, very suboptimal. Uh, this electric motor, obviously because it's a starter motor, overheats very quickly, so you can't use it for very long periods of time. It's highly inefficient. This gear ratio, uh, it's 2 to 1, so it's twice as many teeth here as here. Um, kind of sucks. Uh, the gear ratio is a bit too high, meaning that the acceleration of this bicycle is pretty disappointing. So I'm not satisfied with this machine, and therefore I'm going to take it apart and build an entirely new version. There you go. So that's it, that's, that's the old traction motor right there. So right here we've got the old electric motor, which is of course the, uh, the starter motor. Now the replacement for this electric motor is going to be this electric motor. So this is a brushless electric motor, so as we discussed in a video, that's basically an AC electric motor, a synchronous AC motor. And what this is, is it's an electric motor that is originally designed to be used in electric skateboards but I think it'll work just fine in an electric bicycle as well. And now the thing is, this might not look like a lot compared to this you know, big starter motor right here, I mean compare the size, but this electric motor is a lot more efficient than the starter motor and it can run continuously. So the starter motor Sure, it's very powerful, but it's only very powerful for a few seconds, whereas this motor can just keep running and running and running. This motor has enormous amount of torque, which means that I could connect it to my wheel using this sprocket directly to the other sprocket on the wheel. That's not going to work with this electric motor. This electric motor doesn't have enough torque to connect directly to the wheel using that chain. So I've come up with a solution to, to fix that problem, and that is to use these two gears that I have right here to make what's basically a small gearbox. Okay, so right here we've got the housing of our gearbox. So as you can see, it's basically just a piece of rectangular section with some holes in it. So let me show you how we're going to do this, okay? This big white uh, plastic gear will basically just slide in like this, okay? And then we'll have a shaft that goes through these holes to hold this gear in place. And then the sprocket that will eventually drive the wheel of the bike will go on that shaft like this. And then the electric motor will go through this with its shaft. So I've also got the holes to mount the electric motor. And this small gear will go onto the shaft of the motor and that will be positioned right here so that it drives this bigger gear right here. The next thing that we need to do is get a shaft for this gear and get some ball bearings installed on these holes.
There you go. It's not the prettiest solution, but it works pretty well. I'm actually very, very satisfied with this. Look at how smooth it turns. So now the only thing we need to do is get the motor shaft in here with the little sprocket on it, or the little gear, sorry, that'll attach to this bigger gear over here so that we can then drive the gear just like that. Now there is one problem, and that is that this uh, gear has a 6mm hole in it whereas the motor shaft is actually 8mm thick, so we will need to drill a bigger hole in this small gear. Just when I was assembling this uh, gearbox and motor thing, I realised I actually I've forgotten something, which is I have nowhere to put my speed controlling equipment. So I actually have an electronic speed controller for this electric motor, and I need somewhere to put that. We've successfully made ourselves a little gearbox. Look how well it works. When I turn the motor, you can see the shaft turns very, very slowly. So it has more torque. Right? This gearbox reduces the speed of the motor and increases the torque so that it's able to drive the wheel of the bicycle. might be too long to get in there properly, but we're going to try it anyway. Oh look, it actually just fits. Very nice. And that just slides on just like that. And we secure it using this nut. So the electric motor and the transmission uh, have been installed. Now it's time to take a look at the electrical system that is actually needed to get all of this to work. So first of all, we've got our main battery. So this is the main battery of the uh, electric bicycle. This is what's going to power the electric motor. It consists of four 3S lithium polymer batteries that are inside a metal case. Um, each one of these batteries is 12 volts so as you can see we've got two of them wired up in series to give us 24 volts and then another two wired up in series to give us 24 volts and these two groups are then connected in parallel. The total capacity of this battery pack is about 170 watt hours or something like that which is actually not that much for an electric bicycle but you know these batteries are quite expensive so <laughs> I'm already quite happy I've got four of them this time because as you might remember from last uh, 
video I made about the electric bicycle. I only had two of these batteries back then, so I'm, this is quite an improvement. And I might get more in the future, but it doesn't really matter for now. We've got another battery here, which is a 2S lithium polymer battery, and this is going to power the, um, the computer system, essentially. So the computer system, or the control system, is inside this waterproof box. So what this is going to do is it's going to connect to a potentiometer that is on the steer of the bicycle. And so this thing reads the value from that potentiometer that is on the steer of the bicycle. And then this wire right here is the signal wire that goes to the speed controller on the that is right next to the electric motor, the thing that we just zip tie to the metal frame. Um, so this is going to send the data to our speed controller so that our speed controller knows how much power the motor should get and therefore how fast the bicycle should go. So this box will just go on the back of the bicycle, uh, right near the batteries. That box isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Once I'd connected all the wiring, I decided to take it into the woods for a test drive. Alright, so as you can see, we've come out here in the woods to, uh, to go for a little test drive. But first of all, let's just take a look at the final result. Okay, so over here we've got the main battery pack strapped onto the uh, luggage rack using a rubber band so that I can take it off easily. Obviously, we've got some alarms connected to the batteries so that we can see if they've run out. Um, then here is the secondary battery for the electronics, and this is the box that contains the electronics. So this contains the, uh, the Arduino, which controls the, the speed of the bicycle. Then we've got the power cable that runs over here. That's right, no more tiny, fiddly connections. No, just this massive plug right here. Also, this is a very nice cable. It's got like three 12-gauge wires inside it. So a 12-gauge wire, that's like, that's this, right? It's got three of them inside this cable, so it's a, it was actually quite an expensive cable. And then it goes up here to the front of the bicycle where it goes into the speed controller, obviously. And the speed controller is wired up to this electric motor over here. And that electric motor drives this gearbox and the gearbox is connected to the freewheel clutch uh, slash sprocket and the sprocket connects to the wheel uh, using the familiar chain drive system. Also over here on the steer we've got the potentiometer that controls the throttle. I know I should get a knob or a lever for that but for now it's just this potentiometer and that wire goes along the frame to the Arduino so that it knows how fast the bike should go and then it sends a signal back through the same cable 
to the speed controller over here. So I'm just going to hold the, the camera in my left hand while riding. So I can't go very fast, but you will get an idea of what this thing can do. So let's get going. Right, so now I'm still pedaling just to get it up to speed a little bit. And I'm going to turn the potentiometer and get it going. So we're now on full electric mode. Let's accelerate. There we go. And I'm not pedaling, right? I'm just driving this like a, like a motorcycle, basically. where I did the, the, the train spotting video about how efficient trains are. There you go ladies and gentlemen, the new version of my DIY electric bicycle. It works really well, it actually works a lot better than I had expected. I'm actually noticing I've got plenty of juice to get back home entirely using the electric motor, so that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and of course, thank you for watching.